So, <clears throat> did you ever think you'd be in a superhero movie? And the attraction, I need to know. No, I never thought I would be in a superhero movie. Um, am I ecstatic? Absolutely, because I look at the smile on my kids. Uh, Dylan's 14, Karis is 12, and Dad has finally accomplished uh, something. Uh, my entire career has been contemporary, you know, all contemporary kind of movies. I've never done a special effects movie before, so Ant-Man was, was a wonderful, pleasant surprise. Absolutely. So you play Pym. He's this iconic Marvel character. And as an actor, do you approach playing the role a different way? Did you do research, or did you just go in and it's Michael Douglas' way? No, no, no. They, um, they were polite enough. Disney was polite enough, and, and the production just sent me a book of the Ant-Man comics from the 1960s, and um, Hank Pym in particular, Dr. Pym, my character. So I got a sense of the background of who he was, a kind of a combination um, scientist, a uh, very smart scientist, but still having like Navy SEAL type uh, athletic uh, abilities, uh, and, and sort of followed that as my, my Bible. Marvel gave you homework. Marvel gave me homework. Uh, no, it's, the, it's a very unique experience. It's the, it's the Marvel world. I'm happy to be a part of it. But uh, confidentiality is a prime part. You know, when the scripts would come in, uh, nobody could sign for them. I had to sign for them personally. They had my name. I had to return the script. When a new draft came in, there were things you couldn't talk about for fear that you get a Marvel blowgun in the side of the neck. Um, but it was all part of the intrigue and the excitement. Uh, and I have yet to see the whole picture together with all the different units that were shooting. We had four units shooting at the same time. But it looks, from what I have seen, very exciting. There's more secrecy here than in the China Syndrome. More secrecy here than the China Syndrome. That's correct. Very That's good. Right. All right. What do you think makes Pim tick? What's the prime motivation for that? Well, I think... Um, Revenge plays a very important part uh, in, in his life. Um, he basically has designed and found this in incredible technique and ability basically to reduce a human being to the size of an ant and still maintain incredible, incredible strengths. And uh, I think uh, his fear of this being used in a, in, in a bad way by my company prodigy, played by Corey Stroll, um, makes him very kind of nervous and to, to do the right thing. But he's got a good twinkle in his eye. He's got a good sense of humor. Uh, maybe not the best judge of character, but is trying to pull it together at this point in his life. Okay, and I won't give away what, whether or not he does, but now let's talk about relationships. You have two very different relationships with your daughter, Hope, and with Darren. So tell me about those two well, the, my uh, my daughter is is a disenchanted relationship. Uh, my wife, um, her mother, we lost early in her life. I think it's a part of her which would like to fulfill uh, this role uh, that Scott, played by Paul Rudd, does. Um, basically, I now uh, evolve in working as a mentor with my prodigy uh, in the Ant Man. I think this is something that would frustrate uh, Evangeline's part, played as Hope. Um, and so we have a, um, a frictional relationship, which is hopefully about maybe one of the subplots of Ant-Man is trying to bring family back back together again. And Darren, who uh, was Corey Scholl's role, who's just a wonderful villain uh, in this picture, is just a great job. Um, and he is, he is the man that is taking my vision of the Ant-Man and warping it into something much more evil and more dangerous. Very good. Nice answer. All right, on to Rome. We've got four more and we're done with this one. Um, do you think it's important to have these grounded, relatable characters in a movie that is so not? I, I don't know if they're grounded or not, but I, I do sense that in the, in the Marvel world, which is kind of getting bigger and stronger, going small might be the right answer. And uh, from what I've seen and from what I'm hearing from people who've seen the picture, this whole perspective of the ant's point of view is something very fresh and, and new, and, and people are enjoying it a lot. Not a question, but a comment. You know, when this is the first one, and you don't need the Marvel degree because it explains it all. It's a nice beginning to the story, so I really like that. Right. All right. Um, you have to like the characters you play. So what was 
What did you like most about Hank Pym that made you excited to go to work every day? I think the idea um, of twofold is he had some wit, which I like. He had a twinkle in his eye. He had some. He had some wit, and the idea of teaching somebody of of being able basically to take a prodigy, in this case Paul Rudd, not my ideal prodigy, uh, to be the young Ant-Man as I find out, uh, but good enough, uh, and watching his character evolve through, uh, through my training. Very good. All right, the movie has this great comedic beat, right? So do you get funny lines or are you the straight man all the way through? Unfortunately, I felt like I was a straight man all the way through. Probably not necessarily true, but just felt that way with somebody who's as funny as Paul Rudd. I did find myself a lot of times uh, with a long explanations as to what is going on, keeping the plot alive, only to have Paul come up with a, a one-liner at the end and get the big laugh and go, what have I been doing for the last five minutes? You know, just talking away, explaining, and he gets the laugh. Very good. And the last question. What do you think audiences can expect from the movie, or what do you know they're going to get? They're going to get a uh, they're going to get a good ride, a really good ride, and uh, they're going to get some surprising giggles.